Following the supposed demise of Earth's mightiest heroes, the Avengers, the world has gone to complete shit with their hero's absence as Nighthawk's drones patrol the deserted streets of New York City. When Atlanteans try to claim the lands in Atuma's name, Speed Demon arrives to stop them, while Hyperion declares that the Squadron Supreme has taken over Earth. Hyperion then throws one of them back to the ocean, demanding he report back to Atuma with the news while he massacres the others. Later, Nighthawk shows up on TV to inform everyone that they no longer need to rely on the Avengers for protection, as they have already defeated them. He tells them they have continued efforts to neutralize all other so-called heroes, like the Red Hulk, Doctor Strange, and even Spider-Man. He declares that the Squadron Supreme has become Earth's mightiest heroes, and insists on leading with a firm hand. When angry mobs tried protesting, Nighthawk's drones force them to disperse or be gunned down like rats. He claims that under their rule, they promise to offer protection in exchange for their absolute obedience. A captured Thor claims that absolute rule is not protection, but tyranny. Unlike the Avengers, the Squadron Supreme has no qualms about using fear to control people and keep them in line. Little did Nighthawk realize that Ant-Man managed to plant a listening device on Thor, which was unnoticed, and the Avengers are biding their time for their much-awaited comeback. Hulk claims he has grown tired of waiting and wants to fuck some shit up, but Iron Man talks him down, claiming it is not time to do so. Iron Man explains that Falcon has outsmarted Nighthawk and given them the upper hand. Hence, he leaves it to Falcon to call the shots. Falcon claims they have given the Squadron Supreme exactly what they wanted, the defeat of the Avengers. Now, it is time to show them something so unconventional that even Nighthawk won't see it coming. Across the city, Nighthawk's drones enlist the public's obedience to their rules, eliminating even the slightest acts of aggression. Children have no choice but to stop playing and are forced to report to school on time, lest there be consequences. When a bystander was caught outside during curfew, the drones closed in on him when, suddenly, they ceased functioning. Falcon claims that Nighthawk's police robots are brilliantly designed and impossible to destroy remotely unless they're an Avenger with an EMP device. Hawkeye claims that a couple of his arrows could have also done the trick, but Captain America claims they need to be under the radar if they plan to catch the Squadron Supreme off guard. Later that night, Zarda complains to Nighthawk about his robot's incompetency. Nighthawk claims that someone seems to be targeting them, but the others question his machine's reliability. Given the situation, Hyperion claims that Nighthawk isn't as infallible as he thinks, to which even Speed Demon agrees. Speed Demon claims they were a team for one reason only, and now that the Avengers are gone, he believes they do not need to follow him anymore. Nighthawk reminds them that he was responsible for the Avengers' defeat, but Zarda is displeased with him for taking full credit for their victory. Nighthawk dismisses their worries and claims that if they show the public the consequences for resisting, they won't need the robots to keep the public in line. That said, he reveals to have located a shield base, which he believes is where world diplomats are hiding. Meanwhile, the Avengers, who are hiding, overhear their plan and quickly scramble to evacuate the world diplomats. Later, Nighthawk addresses the world leaders, claiming that there is no longer a need for nations now that the Squadron Supreme has taken over Earth. He sends over the power brute Zarda and the all-powerful yet cruel Hyperion to massacre them. Underground, the Avengers quickly evacuate the civilians unnoticed. An ambassador was pleased to discover that the Avengers are still alive despite the rumors, which Iron Man claims he can neither confirm nor deny. Black Widow asks him to keep it a secret, which he happily does after they save them from the Squadron Supreme. Hyperion later blows up the base, but not before the Avengers have successfully evacuated everyone. 
Back at the tower, Hyperion is proud of himself for what he did to the base, using brute force to send a message. Nighthawk claims it is too early to celebrate, as according to his scans, no one was in the building he blew up. Shocked that their plans have been leaked, Zarda quickly blames Speed Demon, claiming his mouth to run faster than his feet. Speed Demon blames Hyperion, explaining that if he had fought half as well as he bragged, he wouldn't have any of these problems. Hyperion claims he doesn't brag and simply states facts, then blames Nuke for being the leak and being suspiciously quiet. Nuke claims that he merely thinks before speaking and even challenges Hyperion for having suspected him. Nighthawk has had enough and tells them that they can finally go on their separate ways with the Avengers gone. He claims they will then divide the spoils of the planet, giving each member a part of the world to govern. Meanwhile, Falcon is thrilled when they overhear that everything is going according to plan, and the all-powerful Squadron Supreme has decided to split. Iron Man claims he was greatly impressed with Falcon, who had predicted everything that had happened. Captain America claims this only worked with Falcon's new leadership style while he and Iron Man were out. With the enemy separated, they can finally focus on their attacks, and Captain America reminds everyone of their roles. Nighthawk was thrilled that the others were gone so he could focus on managing his part of the lands in silence. He wonders how well the others would control their territories without his robotic police force. Out of nowhere, he is surprised to find his robots quickly taken out, and he later finds an Avengers logo on the scene. Nighthawk refuses to believe it, insisting that he saw the Avengers die and suspects someone must have been fighting in their name. Out of nowhere, Iron Man appears before him and insists that he surrender. When Nighthawk shoots at him, he quickly dodges the shot and gives the signal to Thor. Thor then quickly summons Mjolnir, who breaks the containment chamber holding him. He then attacks Nighthawk with a powerful jolt of electricity, and they fly out of the tower to help the others. Somewhere, Speed Demon quells an uprising and destroys the police tanks stationed outside. While declaring that he now has control over the area, Hawkeye shows up and jokes about how nobody likes a boss who micromanages their people. Speed Demon was surprised to see him insisting on having seen him die with the rest of the Avengers. Hawkeye claims not to believe everything he sees, so he shoots an arrow at him and escapes into an alley. Speed Demon easily dodges them and claims it is hilarious when Hawkeye thinks he can outrun him. When he chases him into an alley, Hawkeye tricks him into running into a trap. Speed Demon claims he can't expect to keep him trapped in a box, but Hawkeye explains that being trapped with the Hulk is entirely different. He claims that the Hulk is still furious at him for the speed time thing he did. After Hulk beats up a trapped speed demon, Hawkeye hands Falcon the enemy speed belt, and Falcon then tells Iron Man to carry on with step two of their plans. On the snowy Alps, Thor lures Zarda to where Falcon waits for them, and he quickly puts the speed belt on her which she quickly dashes uncontrollably. Iron Man stalls Nuke, who claims he will not be tricked into walking into a containment cell. Out of nowhere, they hear Zarda screaming, who uncontrollably bumps into Nuke, and they both end up inside the containment cell. Meanwhile, Captain America and Ant-Man sneak up on Dr. Spectrum, who is charging up at a nearby power plant. Captain America knocks him down with his shield, and Ant-Man then charges up the power amplifier that Captain America had on his wrist. With it, they captured Dr. Spectrum into a prism, and Captain America then gained cosmic powers. Although Captain America struggles to keep himself sane from all that power, he quickly flies into space and uses his powers to turn the sun from yellow to blue. Meanwhile, Hyperion enjoys watching over his territory as servant girls bring him food. He orders them to bring everything to him until nothing is left when he is surprised to see the sun suddenly turn blue. Suddenly one of the slave girls is revealed to be Black Widow and quickly attacks him. Hyperion mockingly laughs at her and says that although he doesn't know how she came to survive her death, he doesn't feel threatened at all, 
deeming her to be the weakest of the Avengers. When he was about to attack her with her heat vision, his powers didn't seem to work, and he fell to the ground, unable to fly. Black Widow explains that although the wavelength of the Earth's yellow sun fuels his powers, it doesn't seem to work on other colors. With Hyperion powerless, Black Widow then quickly knocks him out. With the rest of the Squadron Supreme captured, Iron Man and Falcon report back to Nighthawk, pleased at having outsmarted him, to which Iron Man gives the credit to Falcon. Falcon reminds Nighthawk of when he once tried to recruit him and claims that after everything, he still thinks he made the right decision to choose the Avengers over them. With everyone else captured, Nighthawk claims he still has enough power for his final contingency, Plan. He then activates the device and teleports the weakened Hyperion because of the Blue Sun and Nuke. Nighthawk claims that Nuke has finally achieved his true purpose, and he then gives Hyperion the signal to absorb Nuke's nuclear power. Rejuvenated, Hyperion quickly burrows into the ground to destroy Earth's core. Nighthawk claims that Earth has just been deemed unworthy of its rule and has decided to destroy it. Having heard of the situation, Captain America uses his remaining powers to assemble the Avengers scattered around the world to stop Hyperion. Iron Man chases after Nighthawk, who is trying to escape the planet, while the Avengers focus on stopping Hyperion before he destroys the Earth. The Avengers eventually catch up to Hyperion before he reaches the planet's core. They have him surrounded and outnumbered, attacking him in all directions. Hyperion claims that the Squadron Supreme is superior to the Avengers in every way. Captain America tries to reason with him, claiming that he owes Nighthawk no loyalty who quickly abandons him while he escapes to safety. Hyperion claims that Nighthawk is a necessary ally to which their desire for power unites them. Falcon reminds them that for their plan to work, they must keep Hyperion fighting until he uses all of Nuke's powers. When individual attacks aren't working, the Avengers keep fighting and synchronizing with each other, like Ant-Man following through after Falcon and Thor and Hulk fighting together. Thor pins Hyperion against the wall, to which Black Widow quickly attacks him and has rocks fall on top of him. Hyperion remains unscathed and breaks free, charging up for a powerful attack. Falcon sees through it and quickly sets up a powerful barrier to block his attacks, keeping the others safe. Even after all that fighting, Falcon worries that Hyperion still has enough power to reach the Earth's core. When he explains that they need to attack him with more force, Ant-Man claims he can call for backup, to which he then calls out to all the insects on the planet to overwhelm Hyperion until he runs out of power. Meanwhile, Iron Man catches up to Nighthawk before he escapes to outer space. He tries to reason with Nighthawk, explaining that destroying the planet means destroying his teammates. Nighthawk claims that his teammates are only tools he needs to achieve his goals. Iron Man claims that he is different, who, unlike him, likes his team and that they make him stronger. Eventually, Nighthawk gets the upper hand and shoots Iron Man, revealing his precious arc reactor to his enemy. Iron Man keeps fighting, but Nighthawk slowly rips his armor apart. When Iron Man fires one of his arms, he breaks the windshield, which reverses the ship's magnetic charge forcing it to lose control and quickly nosedive. As the ship soon falls back to Earth and is about to crash, Thor arrives and catches it. Once safely back on the ground, Nighthawk escapes and calls Hyperion for help. He smirked when he saw Hyperion before them but was later revealed to be unconscious and was only held up by the Hulk. Realizing that even Hyperion was defeated, he tries to flee but Falcon cuts him off while Iron Man sneaks up behind and rips out his mechanical wings. With the enemies defeated, the Avengers return to the tower, where Captain America asks Black Widow if Fury is certain that the vault can hold the entire Squadron Supreme. She explains that S.H.I.E.L.D. built a new wing just for them, to which Falcon claims that as long as they keep them separated, they expect not to hear from them again. 
Falcon claims nothing beats a solid team, to which Thor has just finished putting up the Avengers logo back on the tower. Thank you for watching. Check out these other videos and make sure to subscribe and tap the bell to be notified about our latest videos. See you next time.